Hi guys, I think on Monday or Tuesday, I think it was Monday, I did part one to this series about the lionesses and I spoke to the women. And thank you for all the comments and all the well wishes to that sermon. I'm so glad what God is p putting in me is touching uh, uh, women and men. Anyway, as I promised, I, well, today is for the men. Um, this task is harder because I'm not a man, obviously. But I think the, I know the Lord's been speaking to me over the past few days about something for you men. And I called this roar, lion's roar, um, because um, I think the voice of men has been silenced, and not in the way that, you know, you can't do anything. It's not as obvious as the wo women, but as women begin to... Um, begin to step out, I can, I can sense men stepping back a bit, although they still have more opportunities and stuff than women, um, although society seems to be kinder, but I, I find it's kind of a catch-22 that uh, as the women come forward, the men are stepping back, and and um, the Lord is calling you to not only step step forward and take your place as men, but um, do it in a do it in a quieter way and more and more emotional way. Let me explain what I mean. When I was speaking to the Lord about what to speak to men, because obviously I'm not a man. <laughs> I'm not a man, so I don't know, like, I have very little experience with being a man, and I'm not married. So it's kind of like, what do you want me to say to them, Lord? And the Lord kept saying, saying this to me. He said, lions return. He said, lions return. Um, which means return, return to him, return to yourselves, uh, return to society. Um, and funny enough, when the Lord was speaking to me about this, he brought to me the movie of the Lion King, the story of the Lion King, and what Sim Simba went through. And after Simba, if you don't know the story, watch the movie, but um, Simba was a lion cub, and he couldn't wait to be king. He just couldn't wait to be king. Um, he, he, there was a song. He sang a song about it. He couldn't wait to be king. But when his father d was murdered by his uncle, um, and he ran away, he had so much emotional baggage that he... He ran away from his responsibility, from everything he knew, because the guilt and the shame that his uncle heaped upon him, he thought his father's death was his fault. And he had all this emotional baggage. Instead of dealing with his emotional baggage, he ran for years. He ran for years and was adopted by Timon and, and Pumbaa. Um, and they adopted him and they um, kind of took him under their wing. But 
but while they took him under their wing, he still d did deal with what was going on with his family. Uh, he still didn't deal with what went on with his father and his uncle and um, how his his uncle wanted the throne, how Scar wanted the throne. And so years after he ran and was a, a grown lion, his his friend Nala found him. And she can, um, a vision from his father, who had been dead by then for years, convinced him to go back and return and take his place. And the Lord began to bring this movie, The Lion King, to me. And what ha what he's saying is, a lot of men have emotional baggage that they're running from. And he's saying, you've got to uh, return to deal with it. You've got to stop running from it. You've got to, um, you've got to deal with it. Because if you don't, your baggage won't go away and will overtake you and will eat your life. And he said, what? God says, what's plaguing men is just a lot of pain that they are running from. He said, a, a lot of men are running from childhood issues and are running from all this abuse issues that they've never talked about, that they've never dealt with and that those issues are coming out now in their marriages with their kids at their jobs they're coming out in substances because um pain has to go somewhere and if pain doesn't go somewhere it manifests in some really harmful ways. So, brother, you have to deal with what's going on inside. And, it, the, and it's not and it's not more manly to keep things bottled up. That's a lie that the devil has told to many men. Uh, for a long time, and I've come here now to break that lie. It is not more manly to bottle things up and to carry things around. You have to let it go. You have to deal with it. You, If you need therapy, go and get therapy. It's, it, it's no shame in that. It's no, it doesn't say that you're a weaker man. It, all, it even says to me as a woman that you're a stronger man because you're able to deal with your stuff. Speaking as a single wom woman, I wouldn't like to date a man that has all these issues. I would rather date a man that's clear about himself who knows who he is, who knows who God is, and can can deal with, with his issues and can deal with himself. So, he, God's saying, men return. Men return. Men return. And I think that's why a lot of men are operating like little boys. A lot of men are um, are just struggling and not dealing with their issues. Some men even leave their children saying that they can't handle it or they can't deal with it because there are childhood 
traumas that they've never dealt with or when they when somebody says you know I'm pregnant they're scared because they don't they've never seen a father they don't have a father they don't know how to be a father but but man you can what you don't know how to do is you can whatever you don't know how to do you can learn to do you can watch other men that you admire with their children and if you don't know what men to watch look at um some celebrity men who are excellent with their children buy books from them study how they do it look at men from your neighborhood and or 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 some or other places around you can always find examples um to emulate and there's a way to do it men running is not the answer because that son and that son needs you to show him how to be a man and that daughter needs you to show her how what a man is supposed to be like many women are struggling because of are struggling as adults because of the lack of fatherhood because of the scared men who didn't know how to be fathers so they just ran so you got to understand that your place is not optional your place is not optional it's essential men that you that you deal with yourself deal with those internal issues go down to the bottom of those issues and deal with them lay them out with a professional lay them out with a friend lay them out with a pastor and begin to deal with them because that will make you a more complete person so when the right lady comes along then then you then you are complete in yourself and then you you know how to to uh rule and and reign in a godly manner i think the like the reason why there are so many men acting like little boys is that they they were never taught how to be a real man and my prayer today is that God will put someone in your life that will teach you how to be a man that will teach you how to walk with strength and kindness that will teach you how to run like the man you are and that will teach you how to just um how how, how to deal with your self how to deal with your family how to deal with your wife how to deal with your kids and the lord wants me to tell tell you he knows how hard it's been he knows uh the level of of pressure pressure that is on your shoulders and he understands but he's saying today to return and he also gave me three points he says um uh he says um admit submit and commit so he says if you have a problem man admit that you have a problem man admit that you can't do it and i know it's hard because as a man you want to be able to show shoulder the burdens and provide it to uh for your family you want to be able to provide for your wife you want to be the shoulder that she can cry on you want to be able to feed into your children you want to be able to ace it at work 
But brother, no one can do it all. No one can do it all. So you, you need to admit where you need help. It's not a weakness to say, you know what, I can't do this. I'm not, I'm not less of a man because I need help. I'm more of a man because I have the strength to admit that I can't do it on my own. Brother, you weren't meant to go through this alone. You weren't meant to deal with work or your wife or your kids or your family or even your singleness uh, alone. You were meant to have other people, other men to help you, other brothers who can prop you up, other people who can re really um, be with you and go with you there. So the first step the Lord wants me to say is to admit that you have a problem. Admit where you fall short. And don't hide from your problems because when you hide from them, all they'll do is get bigger and bigger and bigger. The darkness exacerbates your problems while the light eliminates your problems. So I'm going to say, the darkness, men, exacerbates your problems. So if you keep a problem in the dark, if you keep a struggle in the dark, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And what I find is that when you keep a problem in the dark, um, the devil can talk to you in the dark. But when you shine light on the problem, God's glory, his forgiveness, and his grace comes to the problem and eliminates it. But if you don't admit that you have a problem, neither God or the brothers that he put, put around you can can be there for you. And I'm telling you, the lie of the enemy is that no one cares. I'm alone. I have to do this alone. I'm a man. Yes, you're a man. You're a, you're a wonderful man. And God, God's called you to roar, lion, roar. But sometimes uh, the first step to roaring is to admit, hey, I can't do this on my own. I can't raise my kids. You've been hiding, pretending that everything's okay for a long time. Um, and you've been not telling anyone, including your wife or your mom or what, whoever in your life that there's a problem. And brother, it's killing you. You know it's killing you. You know it's killing you because that's why you're you're searching. You're searching. You're reaching out to alcohol. You're maybe watching sports to drown out the problem. No sports game will drown out your problem. No. No. No porn will drown will drown out your problem. No other women will drown out your problem. For the single men out there, you might think that that um, her breast will drown out your problem or her, or her womanhood will drown out your problem. It won't. It will just put off the problem and the problem will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you need to admit that you have a problem wherever it is, and then you need to go to God and go to others to say, you know what, I have a problem with this. And that will will say that you're strong, not weak. That will be an example of strength. And he's saying, okay, so after you admit that you have an issue, whatever that issue is, um, the Lord is saying to submit. Um, so he's saying, first submit to me. And then, after you submit, 
standard and the mission of God, then you submit to those leaders around you who God has put in your life. There are leaders, there are pastors, there are there are uh, seasoned men that God has put in your life to help you along. And you have to, he's saying to stand under the mission of these seasoned men because they've, they've been through it already. And I said this to the women as well. We need the older, we need the older, uh, the seasoned men to rise and speak to the younger men. Speak to the younger men about being faithful to your wives. Speak to the younger men about sexual issues, about family issues, and about whatever work issues they're having. Because when you... When you submit yourself to an older man or to his counsel, that's when you get get freedom. Because um, the Bible says, in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. And he also says to um, submit yourselves to one another so your sins might be forgiven. There, there is some men out there that are that are go, going to church on Sunday and the and the club on Friday night, and you think no one will find you out. But the thing with that is, someone somewhere always finds you out, and it's better to admit you have a problem and submit to those men that God has put around you. And if you don't have um, men around you, pray for some. God will answer that prayer. God will answer that prayer to say that, God, I need an older man around me to show me how to do this thing. And even if you're a teenager, uh, pray for a uh, Pray for a younger brother, maybe, pray for an older brother, maybe 28, 29, to, to show you how to deal with, uh, um, uh, kids and a family, how to, how to be respectful to women, how to, you know, respect yourself, first of all. So we need uh, mentorship for for men. So after and so after admit submit, and he's saying to commit. He um, the Lord is saying somebody needs to um, com- commit to something. Like don't commit to the process. Commit to the process. So, if an older man that you trust and that God has put in your life tells you to um, um, do something or not do something, com- commit to doing it. Commit to the process. I know, brothers, sometimes it's hard, but the Lord wants you to roar. And sometimes roaring requ- requires commitment and consistency. A lot of men have a problem with commitment because they're scared and they've never seen it done before. But I'm here to tell you, you can commit. You can be faithful. You can start something and finish it. Be committed, men. Don't be... Uh, here today, gone tomorrow. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Don't be lazy. If you if you committed to do something, do it. If you for teenagers, if you committed to do to help your mom do the dishes or the laundry, do it. 
um, be a person of integrity, be a person of, com of commitment, be a person of, um, of wholeness and holiness. He's calling for lions to roar, but a man can only roar if he's whole in himself. No, a man can only roar if he's whole with God, whole in himself, and whole with others. So being whole with God is basically being truthful with God and and laying laying it all all bare for him to see. God knows it anyway, but he wants you to tell him what's going on inside. You've been hiding from God for too long. He wants you to lay it bare, say, God, this is who I am. And this is how I roll. If you if you want to change me, you can do it. And you'd be surprised. Eventually, he'll change you into the person that he wants you to be. Or he'll use that, those characteristics that you think are too much for his glory. And then you have to be whole with others. So, which I... Which I mean... I mean by that is you what I mean by that is you have to have integrity. You have to do what you say you're gonna do. You have to be what you say you're gonna be. If you if you make a mistake, say that you admit, admit your mistake. If you if you get a lady pregnant, be there for that child. Like I said before because they need you, and if you're not sure, ask. And if you're not sure, do your research. If you've committed to this business, uh, deal, be there, see it through. And if you can't see it through from, for, for some reason, talk to the people involved and tell them your issues. And don't be afraid to work it out. And, and whole with yourself. Be honest with yourself about where you are. A lot of people lie to themselves about where they are. They say they're here, but they're really um, struggling. Or they say they're whole, and they're really struggling. Be honest because honesty, honesty will breed healing like nothing else. You can't, you can he cannot heal what you don't reveal. You've got to be honest and transparent with yourself about what's really going on inside of you. And ignoring it is not going to change it. It's going to going to make it bigger until it's going to take over your life and and um, problems or issues may manifest in different ways so be honest with yourself if if you have a problem with integrity uh, work on that have somebody make you accountable you know, you know, if you have a problem with lying, have somebody keep tabs on you to make sure that you are where you said you are. You know, whatever you need to do, do it. Your soul and your spirit is worth the sacrifice of being embarrassed. I'm going to say it. Your soul and your spirit is worth the sacrifice of being embarrassed. So don't be afraid to say, you know what? I have a problem with uh, truthfulness. 
So I need you to check my cell phone to make sure that I was doing what I said I was doing. Because if you're accountable to someone, you would more stay on the right track. Whereas if you're just doing it, uh, if you're just trying to do this thing alone, you're more liable to slip. So again, the Lord is saying to return to me. Return to me. You've been running from those issues. You've been running from me for a long time. Return. And he's saying to admit, submit, commit. So he's saying to admit, submit, commit. Uh... Bless you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it, enjoyed this. And um, if you're a lady and you, and you think your husband or someone in your life would like this, uh, put it on their wall. Share it with them in a private message. Because um, my goal and my whole ministry is to bless others. So thank you guys. Bye. Say what you want to say and let the world hold up. Honestly, I want to see you be brave with what you want to say. And let the word fall out. Honestly, I want to see him be brave. Be brave, man. Be brave, be brave, be brave. Don't cower in a corner or run away thinking that you can't do this. Stand in your truth. Stand the way God wants you to stand as the leader as the leader on your home, of your home, and lead with love, not with an iron fist. An iron fist doesn't get you any anywhere. But the Lord is saying right now to lead with love. Hug those children, love those children, and, and discipline those children. Discipline doesn't always mean licks. Discipline means talking and and um, teaching your children as well. Sometimes you can do that along with a spanking depending on the child but the point of discipline is really to teach children. Because I know with me um the best kind of discipline was where I I got taught by my parents and not just yelled at. I know from uh, from children in my life that children can sometimes drive you crazy, but frustration doesn't help. Illumination and teaching helps. And be honest with your children when you make a mistake. Because you, you're, you're human, man. You're going to make a mistake. But show, show you're fallible and apologize. Apologizing doesn't signify weakness, it signifies strength. So thank you guys uh, for listening to me. I really, really appreciate it. And be brave. Be bold, man. Stand in, stand in the truth that God has ordained you to stand in. Be the men of gentility. The men of grace, the men of God giving, given power, the men of integrity that I know you are. 
Thanks. See you next time.